I should be dead. I was married, I was doing drugs, I was cheating on my wife, and I was just so unhappy, depressed. But I ghosted my own children. This truck started shooting at our truck. Boom, 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 boom. You know, when you meet God, he doesn't just introduce himself to you, but he's trying to introduce you to you. It's not just giving your life to Jesus. I did the religious thing. I was a Christian, but I just was never taught the kingdom. The blood and the cross was just the beginning. Religion made it the end. I spent the next 10 years unlearning what I was taught, almost brainwashed. If you don't know the purpose of life, you end up experimenting. And religion doesn't teach you the purpose. You get saved. Mm. Half of Christianity is scriptures out of context. <laughs> it is. You might have to edit this, but hopefully you don't. You don't want to go to heaven. Oh no. <laughs> I can see the religious stones. I think I'm barely scratching the surface. Today, I am interviewing a close friend of mine, a phenomenal man of power. I have seen this man happy. I've seen him sad. I've seen him mad. I've seen him brokenhearted. And then I seen him come back from the dead to conquer earth. And I'm over exaggerating. A man who has impacted my life. He introduced me to feeding the homeless. That's one of my favorite memories that I have about him. Anthony Valari. This is his first time ever getting on a podcast. So welcome, Anthony. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Heck yeah, G. I don't even know where to start with you, bro. I really don't even know where to start. First off, what are you doing currently today? And then I'm going to get into your life story because you have a very intriguing life story. But let's talk about the current moment, what you got going on today, and then I want to go into your life story. I'm just currently, what I do for a, a job is I lay carpet for a living. That's what I do for a job. But for work, I, I preach the kingdom and tell people about Jesus. I have like a little Bible study I do on Wednesday nights uh, with family and some friends, and I'm trying to grow this thing. Right now we're in a house, like a little living room setting, but I'm trying to get this thing, you know, big where I'm going to move out of the house and need some kind of structure building dude that's awesome it's um, been in my heart for years but it's happening yeah well i remember probably about a year and a half ago going to the bible study with you and the people that would show up it's amazing seeing people that aren't it's not just a christian audience that show up to the bible study a lot of people are very curious about you know the true message of christ and so what, let's start there. What got you into that? Why are you so hungry to do, do Bible studies and invite people over who ain't even Christian? Uh, well, it was it 2005. That's when I was driving to work and I pulled over on the side of the road. And that's when I gave my life to Jesus. I was married. I was doing drugs. I was cheating on my wife and I was just so unhappy depressed like most of my life that's just, that's how i felt and then you know you just you hear about this jesus guy and i literally that's what i did i, I pulled over and i gave my life to christ and i i turned on a radio station like a christian radio station and it was a it was a it was like a calvary church guy preaching and i was like i'm gonna go to that church and i think i don't know for like 10 years you know i did what every Christian does when they give their heart to the Lord. Church, Bible studies, uh, retreats. I did it all three times a week and then some. And, and then I heard about this kingdom. This, this kingdom that Jesus kept preaching. Never heard about this kingdom in church. Never heard about it anywhere. I just knew some, something was... I, I got introduced it by a buddy who was a truck driver... And he told me, you got you to gotta look into the Bible more. Look at, look at the message of Jesus and what he preached. And he, he, kept, he kept preaching about this kingdom. And so I just, I've been studying the kingdom for about 10 years. And that's why I'm passionate, because I believe every soul on earth is looking for this kingdom. Um, and they don't, for some reason, it's not preached or taught in church. And it's, the missing, it's a missing message. You know, we're all looking for, the, for answers. We're all, we all got the same questions um and to to answers that we're looking for and the problem is the the route that we implement to find these answers is all different 
but I believe we're all looking for the kingdom of God. That is amazing. So I want to get into your whole theology and your philosophy of life, your perception, the way you see the scriptures. I'm probably going to do that probably towards the end, but you have a very powerful testimony and I really want to ask you, let's just go straight from the beginning because in your life, there's a lot of trauma, drugs, you've almost been killed a couple times. Can we just start from the beginning of your life? And this, this show is yours today. Let's start from the beginning of your life. And if you need help on anything else, let's just, let's go, let's go. Yeah. When somebody says, or like when you're saying my life is interesting, you know, when I hear that, I'm like, is it really? It seems it's kind of, it ain't that interesting, but I mean, maybe it'll help somebody. So we'll just, I'll go for it. it, dude, it, it won't doesn't help. seem that compared to other people's lives, but I know that's, you know, we all got a life. Yeah. Um, I just remember, and my memory's kind of bad, so I'll just try, you know. Um, I, I remember growing up, I was a depressed young little boy. I, I, there was no love in my home. I grew up with my mom and dad, and I had a twin brother. He was 11 minutes younger, and I had a sister that was one year older than me. But I just felt like the ugly duckling, you know, the, the black sheep. My mom, especially, um, I grew uh, anger for her because she... I don't, she, she didn't tell me she loved me. She never paid no attention to me. She, I don't think she ever once hugged me. And I just felt, man, at a young age, I felt my mom, she don't, she don't love me. This is what I'm thinking when I'm young, you know, um, she don't love me. Um, my dad's different. He don't, he just works and comes home and watches TV and just depression started early. And when you're young, you just, you don't, you don't know anything about trauma or anything. You're just trying to deal with it at the time. And so, uh, get a little older in my teenage years and I am just one depressed kid. And then kind of moved out when I was 16, I think, and lived with, uh, one of my friends, like my best friend. I thought he was cool. He was, you know, I was, but it was more like I was just following him. And he lived with his mother. He didn't have a father, um, but he lived with his mother. And, you know, I was uh, a senior at the time in high school, just beginning. But I moved in with him, and uh, he got to do anything at his house. And I uh, woke up one day, and I was like, I ain't got to go to school. I moved out of my parents, and I, I'm, I'm free. <laughs> and so I, I didn't I didn't go to I didn't finish uh, senior year and uh, started started partying. Um, shortly after that, my sister got, um, my, I got a phone call saying, you need to go to the hospital. You know, you know, Lana's sick. And uh, long story short, my sister ended up dying at 19 years old of uh, valley fever. Um, I didn't know what that was. I just heard it was like some kind of cold, but her immune system was weak ever since she was born. Wow. You know, even in high school, she lost her hair. So she had to wear a wig. So you know, that, that was, you know, that's rough for a woman. And, uh, mm. but I didn't really know. I didn't really ask questions like, why did Lana lose her hair? I just, my sis, I just knew she had wore a wig and man, I just, I really didn't ask. And then a few years later, she ended up dying. And, uh, that was, uh, she was out of everybody in my family. I was like my best friend. And, uh, it just, I just started partying and, um, um, doing drugs and, uh, I should be dead. Yes, like you mentioned in the beginning, I, I've, I've probably overdosed about three times. Um, should be dead. Um, one day I was driving. How, how old were you when you overdosed? Uh, I had to be 20. Wow. Yeah. I remember one night we was driving to um, go night fishing. I never knew what that was. I didn't know you fished in the night. <laughs> <laughs> but my friend said, let's go night fishing. And so we was driving and uh, we pulled up to a red light and there was a car next to us. And I had this, like, in, I think, what is it called? Intuition. Okay. Because I had been shot at before, but the way I've been shot at before is I was just driving down the road and the um, I just, boom, 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 this car was 
this truck started shooting at our truck. Um, they actually caught those guys and they actually went went to jail and everything. They actually send you letters when when somebody when somebody commits a crime like that that let you know how the court case is going and wow. let you know, hey, by the way, so and so's getting out. I didn't really follow up on the case. I, I didn't even know they caught the guys, but they do send you mail letting you know, hey, they're getting out. But anyways. Um, after that incident, we pulled up to a red light and I had this intuition like, this ain't good. It was like a little El Camino, three guys in it, and we had a red light. And the passenger of the El Camino said, what's up? And my friend driving said, what's up? But he, he was just trying to be nice. I was like, I actually ducked down in the back of the Bronco <laughs> before I even seen anything. But I was just like, this ain't good. I ducked, <laughs> yeah, I, I ducked down. And then I peeked up and then I saw the chrome. Boom, 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 boom. All up in the truck, all the bullets. And uh, my dri my driver, my, my friend, he just kind of ducked down and he, he, he put his uh, foot on the pedal and he just started cruising. And, you know, he's hitting the curb, but he just got away. Nobody got hit. And, uh, you that know, that was the second time. That was the second time. But, I mean, that was, I don't know how... I mean, I know how now. Yeah. Maybe angels be blocking those bullets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. You know I mean, like so. But the, you said the first time it looked like that, like a vehicle like that before. The first time, I mean, the story's coming better. We were at a Circle K, and we had uh we had a uh, a, a base system. What do they call it? A boombox, or we had a loud tr a, a truck play boom booming music. Okay, and I think the people were whatever trying to be punks. Or, and we didn't say nothing, but that's when we left. That car, I think, kind of pulled out, then made a U-turn, and then shot at us. Man. All because of our radio, probably. Man. But yeah, we. I mean, just... <sighs> so crazy. just, you know, you look back, you know, and you're like, man, I, he, you know, he spared me a yeah. number of times, a number of times. And I don't know why some people don't get spared, but... I ain't, I ain't questioning that. I just know I've been spared, and I'm, I, you know, that's why I'm just thankful every day to be alive. You know, and I'm, uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Dude, that's wow. Wow. So when that happened, how old were you? Uh, it, that all happened within the same couple years. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I met you when I was, I think I was my sophomore year of high school. Yeah. Well, it was my sophomore year of high school. I was walking around down the street in my neighborhood doing magic tricks because I always did magic tricks everywhere I went. Carried around a deck of cards with me. And then I'll go talk to people about Jesus. So I'll do a magic trick and then I'll talk to them about God. And then, so I met your son, one of your sons. And when we crossed paths, I saw him down the street and I was like, I was like, what's up, man? He was riding his bike towards me. And I'm like, what's up, man? He came over and we had some small talk. And I said, hey, let me show you some magic tricks. He was like, okay, showed him some tricks. I started talking to him about God. He immediately was like, man, you're just like my dad. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, bro, talking about all this Jesus stuff, man. <laughs> You're like my dad. Let me introduce you to my dad. So I come over to Anthony's house, come in through the garage. I meet you and one of your friends. And I remember the look you and your friend had on your face. Do you know which friend? Was it Chris? Chris? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember the look you guys had on your face. Very suspicious of me. <laughs> just like who's this guy uh, who's a black guy Who, who's a, yeah who's a black guy <laughs> just kidding just kidding my my friend chris was black he was black looked just like him <laughs> I, I, yeah i just thought about that recently too. i was like that's why we're friends huh <laughs> no, I'm messing. so you replaced him <laughs> so i come in you guys are looking at me kind of like who's this kid and then your son's trying to tell you hey he's all about god too man you guys should talk and be friends or something and then once I started telling you about my life story and my testimony and stuff, and all of a sudden you kind of like brightened up a little bit and you're like, dude, what's hey, you, sh you should come over more often, man. So I started hanging out with Anthony all the time, going with Anthony on jobs, doing carpet with him. Eventually he, he started teaching me how to do a little bit of carpet. He'll pay me, give me a couple dollars and then I'll go home and we, we hang out, go to church on the weekend. I'm going to Bible studies with you. And, and then that's why I say in the beginning, like I've seen you mad. I've seen you sad. I've seen you happy. I've seen you in good times. I've seen you in your lows after this overdose and you almost got killed what happened right after that 
I met a woman um, shortly after that somewhere, and, and I got I got married. Okay. And, you know, I had two children and um, married for about 12 years um, and got divorced. And that was a pretty rough time. Um, divorce is tough. Um, it can definitely be a, uh, a death sentence or a, or a lesson for a lot of men. Yeah. Um, but, you know, after that, I stayed alone for, I think, like five years or so and just went hard into who, who am I? Like, I got to figure out who I am. Um, and it was a, it was, I learned a lot. Like, I recommend any man who is alone take advantage of it because it's hard to discover who you are when you're with somebody and it's, it's, it's too late when you, when you find a woman, it's hard to separate that time from your woman and find who you are. But I never knew who I was in my marriage. You know, I never knew who I was. Um, wasn't a good husband, wasn't a good father. Um, and then I took some alone time and, uh, learned a lot about myself. What'd you, what'd you learn? I learned that, uh, I'm not an accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I learned I'm not an accident. I learned, uh, who, who, you know, where, where, I, where I'm from, you know, like, you know, questions that we don't really ask ourselves. Those, those, those questions like, who am I? You know, where am I from? Where am I going? These are questions that I believe every human should answer, but we, 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 that we're not, we're not given these questions at a young age. And then by the time we're 20, 30 years old, we got these questions. Like, like I'm saying, like, who am I? Uh, who am I? That's not my name. I'm Anthony, but that's not who I am. Right. And these are questions that changed my life. And I sought these questions out. Where am I from? Cleveland? <laughs> no, that's where my mom and dad shared a milkshake. <laughs> and I was born. But that's not where I'm from. You get it? Like, yeah, I'm from a different place. But so you, just those questions I started pursuing. Wow. And then I met someone else. And I knew you when I met someone else. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was alone, and I was I was I was doing good. I was on a search, and boom someone came up and 30 days later i was married i remember that man <laughs> <laughs> i mean you want to take over i can keep going i mean 30 okay. days later i was married but you i don't know i never i don't even, you saw me in that time and you yeah. i don't know what you was thinking i don't know if i've ever asked you or you can remind <laughs> me like you were probably like what did you do <laughs> oh i know go ahead you can hurt my feelings too brother like i'm healed now but yeah no you you're you a lot's happened since then oh, um yeah no nah, i mean from what i remember is so like i had said earlier i had you and i had become friends and i was going to church with you a lot and i started uh i remember okay you you brought me and my brother out to go feed the homeless with with two of your children and that was that was a that was honestly a life-changing experience and you know because it it that was something that opened my eyes to broke how, how broken people are. Cause you know, like when I'm a teenager, you know, you're just thinking, Oh, you know, people are homeless and you're not really thinking like why they became homeless or what you just think, Oh, they just can't pay their bills. Oh, they're homeless. They'll probably get a home at some point in the future. Who knows? But no, I remember when we went out and we were talking to these homeless people and we go on the streets these people were real broken, really broken. And so, at this point, you know, I'm hanging out with you and then I remember, I remember like, we'll, we'll go get Taco Bell or something. You'll got a bunch of tacos and then we'll just talk or something. And then you'd be like telling me about, I remember like you, you wanted to be in a relationship and stuff. And, and, you know, it's like, you, you know how Christians are. It's like, come together, always talking about, man, I want to get that godly woman. So, you know, you, 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 you and I were always talking about that. Like, oh man, I want, I want a, a beautiful, godly Proverbs 31. And so when you, by the time you met this, your, your ex-wife and so to explain from my perspective, I just remember 
you told me, I remember you told me about her, but you were kind of discreet. Like it was kind of like, uh, I felt like you were kind of trying to hide it a little bit, just a little bit. And then I remember I'm like, what, what can I say? Like, I'm a teenager. Like, how's it, this is a grown man. How's he going to take advice from me? But I remember I threw in my two cents. I was like, Hey man, just, you know, cause I met, I seen her and I'm like, okay, she, you know, she, 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 she beautiful. I was just like, look, man, be careful, be careful, man. Cause and you're like, dude, I, I, I think this might be it. And I'm like, just be careful on that one, man. I, um, you, you know, take some time. And then I remember like not shortly after you're like, man, Hey man, I'm, I'm married. I'm like, what? And then all of a sudden, bam, I'm ghosted. <laughs> oh. Not, not completely. Like if I were to like, you were the over, only one. Yeah. Nah, yeah. It, 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 it Mm. It, if I were to show up at your house, like you'd still chit chat with me and stuff. Cause I, I, I mean, I'll come over every now and then, but your focus was the relationship at this point. So, you know, I didn't want to get in the way. Yeah. You didn't owe me anything either. Yeah. But that's what happened. Yeah. You weren't the only one giving your two cents. Yeah. I even had, and I don't know. I even, I even had uh, my, my first wife. She said she had a, like a prophetic dream and I, it's just now coming back in remembrance about and I about you should not marry this person. Like wow. the, and she had this dream. I can't remember what she said, but it was vivid. But you know, I was like, Yeah, whatever. But um it was yeah, it was a it was it was a quick decision and I, I don't recommend anybody getting married in thirty days. Um, <laughs> um but I ghosted my own children and uh, it, it was it was it was a time in my life where like i said i was alone and then man talk about momentum <clears throat> momentum killers roadblocks or whatever you know it was uh it was someone put in my life that just it was stopped the momentum i believe of what i was doing so anyways that lasted seven years and then uh that ended and uh continued on with this journey of self-discovery and yeah it's been it's been amazing it's, it's self-discovery it's the, one of the greatest discoveries on earth yeah you know i mean after that relationship was over and and you know we we chatted we chatted a couple times and i remember you were just like dude i need to get myself straightened out because you kept talking about purpose 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 <laughs> I got a purpose. I know I was born to do something. And so what was the pivot? I don't like to use the word toxic, but you can use it. It was very toxic. Yeah. Once you got out of that, what was the pivot? I was broken hearted. I was, I mean, even though I, I realized that the, uh, not uh, like now, like it, it was probably the wrong decision. It was the wrong decision. But you know, at the time I was broken hearted. I, I didn't want that to end. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, not many, I can't survive too many broken hearts. I don't think a lot of men can. Yeah. And uh, a divorce will do that. And man, but that's when I really looked inside and started learning about trauma and, you know, not blaming her because I would blame her all the time. But then I started looking within and like, why would I put like, why would I put myself through that why do i feel the way i do what why do i always chase a woman yeah and why do i always need validation and i had no self-love i had no self-worth mm -hmm. you know i knew a lot of stuff and i you know i could i could quote a lot of scripture and i mean i was i i, I mean i i thought i was wise yeah but man it was only when i was alone in the darkness looking within and asking questions like those questions that I would ask before, but really digging them out. Who am I? Right. Wow. What? Where am I going? Why do I need a you know validation? And I just knew I I, I it was so no your self esteem insecurities. I need a woman to tell me that she loves me because I don't love I don't love what I see in the mirror. And that that guy died. I, I he's pretty much just about dead. <laughs> it's 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 i'm i'm getting so close to god and you know when you meet god he doesn't just introduce himself to you but he's trying to introduce you to you yeah 
And a lot of people meet God and, and they know a lot and they love Jesus and they, they just, they're in love with God. But he's also trying to introduce himself to you, that, that real you that you see in the mirror, the one that you can't, that you got to look away from when you look in the mirror. Mm. You know, so I challenge people, man, look in the mirror, stare at it. And that person staring back at you, that's the one you need to meet. And I never met that guy for, I'm still getting to meet him. Yeah, but I'm closer than ever. But I'm still getting to meet him, and it's it's a it's that's when the journey changes when you meet that person. Wow, wow, that that's amazing. So, where would you say you're at now compared to when you first started asking that question, like who am I, and you know where am I from? I'm trying to figure out identity. So from 20 years old, doing drugs, almost got killed to now. And the reason I ask this question is because a lot of people, they go their entire life not answering those questions. And you're saying, hey, you've gotten closer. Like, what, what did you discover about yourself? I mean, with those questions, like, I don't, it's not just lip service, like, I know how I felt back in the day. I know the depression and, you know, even playing face. How you doing? I'm doing good. You know, praise God. But really just being. But, you know, mm. those questions, it's not just giving your life to Jesus. It's those questions really, I, I believe that that's how you, that's the only way you can have a fruitful, impactful life inner within is when you answer those questions. And I'm not just saying it like, Right now I'm I'm at peace. I don't I don't I don't need anybody. I'm not saying I don't want to be with somebody in the future, but I I I'm passionate about continuing to discover who this guy is. And I've always had ro like every time I gain momentum, there's always roadblocks. And I, I think it happens with a lot of people. The, there's there's momentum killers, there's stumbling blocks that it's it, we just we go on for years and then something happens, the same. You know, an ex-girlfriend will call, an ex-boyfriend will call, or a drug, or something will come up, and, you you know, it just, you go backwards. And I'm definitely a lot closer than who I was even last year, and it's exciting. Um, but with theology and stuff and learning about God, man, I believe I know a lot, but, man, the more I know, I, I, I don't the more I just don't want to even talk about it because he is so vast in the realm of what God knows and we're trying to figure him out. And I, you know, I've been seeking for years, but man, I barely, I think I'm barely scratching the surface. Um, I don't want to stay quiet because I know a lot, but man, sometimes I just want to be very cautious on how I speak because the more I learn, I'm just like, you don't know nothing yet. Mm. he's just amazing right wow man what's the hat uh this is matthew 4 17 okay <laughs> this is the very first statement jesus made when he began his uh public earthly ministry mm. shoot i feel like we're about to go deep <laughs> before we start getting into the theology real quick you, you went from being a man who's lost to now you have peace in your life. You had said something the other day to me where you said, religious trauma is real. Can you explain that? It's a powerful spirit. It doesn't want to die. Um, religion it's the most powerful force on earth um, but it keeps people away from the message of the kingdom i mean we can get in that in a little bit but you know the Man. message of the kingdom is 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 the i mean even jesus said when you find this kingdom it's like finding a treasure but religion wants to pacify it it wants to bury it and i did the religious thing I don't want to talk bad about any religion or anything, you know, but, you know, I, I was a Christian 
and uh, but I just was never taught the kingdom and I was just uh, I could do church with my you know blindfolded I knew church and Bible but I didn't know kingdom and yet Jesus talked about kingdom for three and a half years he could not look at a fishing net a pearl a mustard seed a fig tree a field he was obsessed with this kingdom and religion is what height it blocks it that's why jesus made statements like woe to you religious leaders you pharisees hypocrites you shut the door to the kingdom in people's faces you will not go in yourself and you permit others from entering it like i never even saw those verses but when you start seeking yeah. the kingdom these verses pop out he only used the word church once so when we talk about theology and stuff, man, I'm scared to talk about theology because I'm, I've been, I've been, I pulled over in 2005. And, and pray not, the prayer you said? And pray that little prayer. Okay. And I, the prayer's good. You know, you got to, you know, you got to, you got to know who, who Jesus is and what he did for us, rede you know, redeemed us from our, our sins. And without him, obviously that's, there's nothing, but salvation, you know, the blood and the cross is is it was just the beginning but Christ, religion made it the end religion made it the end so now we're just waiting to die for our reward which is heaven is what religion teaches all right hold up hold up hold up, hold up. two things you said religion made the cross the end that's what you said right all right and then you were talking about religious trauma. So there's two twofold questions I want to ask. First off, I'll, I want to ask if you can give some examples of re religious trauma and if you've ever gone through that or have seen that. And then also, then afterwards, I want you to clarify what I you mean. I mean, for me, I, I, I like... Because what you said, I think is deep. I think... I think people really need to understand that too, like religious trauma, how you said religious trauma is real. Can you give an example of what that looks like? And if you've ever gone through it or seen other people? I mean, I spent the next 10 years unlearning what I was taught. Like, that's one thing you got to do. Like, I had this whole theology, I thought I had it figured out. I, I know he died, he rose, I, you know, I, I, that's all true. Um, I was going to be good and follow the the Bible and, and behave myself and you know and as long as I put my faith in Jesus my voice changed sorry um <laughs> then he's going to come back for me I'm going to go to heaven and then I hear this kingdom message which which offers um sonship dominion authority um where the mandate was given to mankind to rule earth and I'm hearing what this is what Jesus is saying. And now I got to unlearn all the stuff I was kind of taught, like almost brainwashed. How did that start? It all started one day when my buddy uh, called me on the road. And he, like I said, he was a truck driver and he played the, Chris, like, or he played the game too. <laughs> can i say that bro be, be, be loose you good he played the religious game too okay. he played it like he loves jesus my buddy loved jesus like i love jesus we love jesus he's everything he's the king and he called me one day he goes man you gotta read genesis 126 you gotta you gotta uh, i'm i'm getting something i've never i've never heard this verse before like i'm hearing it and y'all you know genesis 126 and yeah i'll tease the audience i don't even know if i want to say it <laughs> but Genesis 1 26 saved my life this verse saved my life but you know if you don't know the purpose of of life you know you end up experimenting and religion doesn't teach you the purpose it just teaches you get your get your gold ticket get your golden ticket just get saved just get saved and you've heard me say this analogy but you know for the viewers th this is a great analogy by Dr. Miles Monroe if I have a shoe store and I have wonderful shoes, awesome colors, awesome sizes, it's the best shoe store in the world. If you want shoes, come to my shoe store. Everything you want is in this store. But let me tell you about the door to my shoe store. It's 
it's a beautiful door it's <laughs> great is thy faithful door it's 10 feet <laughs> it's 10 feet tall it's like six six feet wide and it's it's covered in gold and silver <laughs> and rubies it's a beautiful door do you want to come to my shoe store to see the door <laughs> no you want what's inside most christians are dying at the door but let's not be mistaken the only way to get in the store is through the door <laughs> but we preach the door and never preach what's inside it's kingdom living it's a kingdom that you can experience here on earth. You don't necessarily see it physically. It's going to come eventually when he comes. But it's it's kind of a paradox. It's coming and it's here now. That's what this says. Repent for the kingdom from heaven has arrived. But you think when Jesus said repent for the kingdom from heaven has arrived, he was looking for a show of hands of who wanted to accept Jesus in their heart? He's talking to a bunch of Jews and they, they were looking for the kingdom but not the way they thought it. They were looking for a king to come set up a throne. They had no idea what he was talking about. Neither do most believers. And I'm not knocking believers, but I'm here to tell people until I die what Jesus preached from town to town. He preached this kingdom. Luke 4.43, I must go from town to town preaching the good news of the kingdom. And we can get into what it's kingdom, you know, you know we got we to gotta get the concepts right. So anyways, even though that's been a while, man, I'm still wrapped, like, it, I'm still wrapping my head around this. I mean, he tells us to seek this kingdom. So, you know, that's our first priority. Seek ye first the kingdom. So I'm, I'm seeking this kingdom daily, daily. And every time, it, it doesn't get old. It is really like a treasure. Matthew 13, 44. It's like, uh, the kingdom of heaven is like a man that found a treasure hidden in a field. In his excitement, he sold all he had so he could buy the field. It, it doesn't get old. There's only so many times you can tell a man you love him. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I'm going to follow you. And every every believer, every Christian, you know, just follow Jesus. Well, you, you talk about kingdom too much. Just follow Jesus. I'm like, dude, if I'm following Jesus, he's going to tell me to seek his kingdom. And we just, we, we think the kingdom, I think a lot of people think the kingdom mm. message is, the, the, a lot of people think the kingdom message is Jesus dying on a cross, rose again three days later, conquer death hell and the grave and if you put your faith and belief in him that that blood ransom ransomed you your reward is heaven that is the kingdom message to a lot of people and, and that's what you mean by we're preaching about the door but not what's beyond the door 100 percent. and earth is burning at the seams yet we were given the power and the dominion and authority to 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 rule earth with each other we were given dominion over the earth Adam lost that dominion. He fell not from heaven. He didn't fall from a religion. He fell from rulership to earth. Why do you think Jesus came? To bring it back. But we're over here singing kumbaya, you know, in the middle of the night while, 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 while laws are being changed and, you know, systems are being rigged and we're all waiting for Jesus to come back. And he's like, I'm waiting for you to occupy the land until I come back. Do business. Change. Change this, like, you know, um, repent for the kingdom's arrived. In other words, change the way you think. My country's here. My, my governing influence is here. And I'm pleased to give you the kingdom, he says. Wow. That's the short story. I mean, I, I can, you know, I can do an introduction for 12 weeks. Well, did I mention that this is Anthony's first podcast? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this dude's way too natural for this. I feel like he's been he's been he's been prepping. He's been doing something. I listened to worship music for an hour before I got here just to prep. <laughs> you lying? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. So, as the host of this podcast, you know, normally, like if you're interviewing somebody, you just want to kind of get them to tell all the interesting things about the stories that, like, I know you so. I want you to tell all the stuff that I already know about you. And I want, so during this, I'm going to try to pick your brain in ways that I'm like, oh, I don't know if what Anthony thinks about this or this or that or whatever, who knows. Right. So while we're talking, just keep that in mind, I'm going to look for little, little things, but can you 
I often tell you this. When you're talking to people, it's like information overload. You got a lot in here. You, you and I and, and and even when we're doing doing the Bible study, like you got a lot of information, bro. And you know how to you know how to say a whole lot. <laughs> and then I get what you're saying, right? And I understand it. But I'm going to try to simplify. I'm, I'm going to try to see if we can try to simplify what's going on in your head. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we should go back to the analogy with that door that you're talking about. Because we we're saying, you know, you said that we're preaching about the door. And, and you said Christians are dying at the door, right? Is that what you said? Uh, yeah. Okay. They're dying at the door. And the door is obviously the entrance into something else. And so let me just make sure. So you're saying Christ is the door. Yes, sir. Didn't Christ say that? Yes, sir. Okay. So his death and resurrection on the cross and believing in him, that's the doorway into something come on and most christians think that the doorway is just getting to heaven after you die but i'm hearing you mentioning things about you mentioned things about laws and do business and you're talking about dominion you're you're speaking as though this kingdom is that christ is talking about is here now it's now so let's try to clarify that because if somebody's thinking he's saying that the kingdom's here now it's arrived now and you need to change your way of thinking the government of heaven is here now if heaven is here now why is there still evil in the world i guarantee that's probably what someone's thinking if they made it to this point in the video okay have any thoughts or explanation for that yeah, you're right, man. I got so much in my head. It's it's <laughs> it's hard for me to dumb it down. And it's also hard to explain a kingdom when it comes by revelation only. If that, if that makes sense. You know, <laughs> yeah. It you you Jesus, he hides things. He hide, he will hide the kingdom if you're not looking for it. So even if I dumb it down, like I believe he's a king. His kingdom is from heaven. Heaven is a country. Heaven has laws. It has a culture. It was the first thing God created before he created the earth. It, it, it has a whole, it's a whole place up there. And he wanted to bring that culture here to earth with act, without him actually coming to it. And we would be his sons and daughters, and he would he's the king, also our father. I mean, it's like a little child can understand that. But I, I can explain it no matter what. But you you can't find this kingdom without like without he, him revealing it to you. He even tells Peter stuff like flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. You know, they ask him, When will your kingdom come? Jesus says things like, The kingdom is not detectable by visible eyesight. You won't be able to say, Look, it's over here, it's over there, for it's within you. You know, you don't see citizenship. It's it's in you. It, Explain that. What does it mean when Christ said you're not going to be able to see the kingdom of God and you're not going to be able to say it's over there or, oh, it's over there. For the kingdom of God is within you. What does that mean in like a practical sense? In a practical sense, it's you have dual citizenship. I mean, I'm from the United I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm from the United States. I was born here. But Jesus said, you know, Nicodemus was looking for this kingdom too. He wasn't looking for a religion. He wasn't looking for Jesus. He said, how must I enter your kingdom? First thing he asked him. And he had to, the Bible says he came by night. So he's probably embarrassed. Because even Jesus said things like, man, you're the teacher of Israel. You don't know these things. I tell you heavenly things. How am I going to tell you earthly things? You, you don't understand. How can, I, how can I enter your kingdom? He said, you must be born again to see the kingdom. That's the first thing he said. You must be born again to see it. And I think Jesus meant, you ain't even going to know there's a kingdom from another realm unless you're born again. You ain't even going to you ain't even gonna know it exists. Like, so, so first you got to be born again to even see it, to, to even, you know, perceive it, to, to even know. 
And then, and then he says, you must be, you know, born again to enter it. And you, you can be a believer and love Jesus and still not know how to function in his kingdom. And I'm probably still speaking too deep, man. You know, you're the good one, man. Help me dumb this thing down. <laughs> it's, I'm just talking, man. No, I, man. I know. I throw a lot of stuff out there. See what sticks. <laughs> Something's going to stick, though. Because when you <laughs> preach the kingdom of God, when you preach the message that Jesus preached, it's like a mustard seed. You know, there's four times, you know, the parable of the sower. We all, even everybody knows the parable of the sower, but it shouldn't be called the parable of the sower. So we mess up words in the Bible. I don't know who wrote the Bible. I mean, you know, we canonize this thing and we got, I think the Catholic Church yeah. put this thing all together, but we got words that are missing. It's the, it should be called, I think the word sower in that parable is just in there once. A man went out to sow seed. But, but the word soil is in there like four different times. It should be called the parable of the soils, which which the soil represents the condition of a person's heart. That's why he says, when anyone doesn't understand the, or, it, there, there's four different type of soils. All right, there's Listen. a there's a there's like the footpath. There's like the rocky soil. Okay, right. Um, there's the good soil, and there's the thorny soil. These represent the now. First off, the seed is the message of the kingdom. Right. Matthew chapter 13, you can look it up. That's the seed. Other translations say the word of God. So when Christians read that, or Bible thumpers, they, they read, <laughs> the, 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 the farmer went out to sow seed, and it explains it. It says, because he actually explains this parable, and he says the seed is the word of God. So we think like, oh, it's the word of God, it's the Bible. Uh, another translation says it's the message of the kingdom. Well, that's what Jesus is sowing. He's sowing the message of the kingdom. And then it, it says... It, this this message lands on four different type of hearts people that it's just like doink so that's the type that lands on the sidewalk <laughs> birds came and just it's gone You're right <laughs> and there's other people like ooh, this is exciting right wow message of the king this sounds power dominion authority changing the earth occupy till i come sonship i got my identity back he gave me the ring he gave me access to authority this is good but then it says persecution comes on account of the message and then it just goes away and then another seed lands on this type of soil when it when 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 uh the deceitfulness of riches or the anxieties of this age come sucks out the word making it unfruitful but then it also some good soil when a man hears this message he can produce a crop 30 60 even 100 fold and we ain't even getting the right seed. We get in Christianity or we get in Baptist or Lutheran. You know what I'm saying? We get in religion. Even the Pharisees, they, that, it was religion. It was religion. It was religion. I'm trying to, it's hard to transfer from membership to citizenship. Bro. I'm going to say that again. Yeah, say it again, bro. Say it again it's and hard then to, explain it, it again. It's hard, to, it's hard to get you to... Transfer from membership to citizenship, from rituals to rights. Membership as in church membership. Church membership. To citizenship in the kingdom. Because what's the first thing you do when you go to a new church? We got we got Usher Sally and, uh, you know, Billy with smiles. No, no, no. <laughs> Praise God. I'm not. Okay, that's bad. No, that's bad. But they come at you and they coming at you. And then you got to fill out that card. Get your contact card. I just went to a church the other day. I've never seen this before in my life. Good guy. Good, good church. I'm not gonna, I'm not, no, no, no. I've never seen this. I got a, I got a video. Oh, my God. I got a video from, from, the, so, from the pastor. It, it was very welcoming greeting, you know. But what do they want you to do? They want you to, you know, get membership. And what the problem with church is they... They want you to join the church. Okay, cool. They want, you know, and I'm not saying all churches are like this, but yeah. they want you to be a member. And, you know, it's just, it, it just, it, you get a cold snack every Sunday and they don't want to empower you because guess what? If that happens, if they empower you, you don't need to come back. You, Say it again. You don't need to come back. And you might actually be effective for the earth realm. And you heard that, what is that cliche? Some people are so heavenly minded to no earthly good yeah man we need to be earthly i know this to be true too like 
I'm not going to say the church. There's this church I was going to. It was, it was a Pentecostal church. And literally anybody in the church, if you started stepping up and you started going after what you believe was God was calling you to do, they strike you down. Like they, the pastor is the main show. You might be a gifted individual, but they did not like that. I think I think a lot of churches they they zap the gifting and the talent and the I think that a legalistic mentality it it subtly strips away the power that God has given you. But continue. Yeah, I um and I kept trying to tell the church about the message of the kingdom and you know, I I got shut down. I had lunch with a couple higher ups, and uh, they they told me, "I think you're mentioning, I think you're obsessed with the word kingdom too much." That's what they told me. And 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 I was like, "Man, isn't that what Jesus was obsessed with?" I didn't tell them that, but I knew it was going to be a short lunch. <laughs> and you know, then I try, I, but but I love church, like I love people, and I wanted to keep going, so I would try and try and try. But every time I'm like, "What am I going to do? I'm going to keep compromising." because they're not on board with this message. And it's not the people in the church, like the 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 citizens in the like that are that like coming to church, it's the the higher ups, the hierarchy, the Christian cartel. <laughs> because what they they don't want to hear it. But 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 the Christians, they love like a lot of them love the message because there's a <laughs> lot of Christians that love Jesus and they want to get past the door. There's actually a lot of people like that. Bro, you know you're a comedian, bro. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> you're deep. You're well, deep. If but... this kingdom message don't work out, I'll go to comedian. <laughs> no, but... I'm listening. The higher-ups don't want it. Perhaps, because once once someone thinks you might know something more than the, the higher-up, you're gone. And and I... So... But I've been racking my... You know, I've been beating my head on this... Or I've been racking my brain on this, man. Just I want to get involved. You know, I, so I just you know have that heart still. I want to get involved in church. But what am I going to do? Like, be a part of someone's ministry, but I have to keep my mouth shut? And that's what happened last year when I went to... I, I went... I, went, I did a, a trip out. Not a mission trip, but I did a ministry workout in Missouri. And um, I worked for a ministry for over a year. And I had to watch what I said. I, but I, it, it was like a sober living ministry. I loved it. I, yeah. I met, met some good people, learned a lot about myself. But I had to, I had to keep quiet on, you know, I had to kind of tone it down. And that was, that was rough. I, you know, in the beginning it was cool. But after the honeymoon stage, I was like, you cannot, you got you to gotta branch off and, you know, just do your own thing. And get some people like you guys that, you know, believe in this message and and just we got to get this thing out. Let me ask you a question. So, I mean, we've seen this common theme, and we've even experienced it ourselves, where you go to church for a while, you go to church for years, maybe you volunteer, you get involved with the ministry, you, you love the church you're going to as well. Worship, you do you do everything, all the church stuff, and then over time, it starts to feel as though you're like you're not really getting anything out of it anymore okay great maybe you could stick around though because maybe you've just matured to a point where you should just be in ministry and help out but then when you try to get involved they shut you up they don't want you to speak talk the way you talk they want you to kind of sound like the pastor or you know only say things in the way we say it and so there's this conflict where you're no longer getting anything out of what you're getting from this church, what you what you wanted to get from this church. I mean, you got the basics down, you got milk, you know, you got saved and all that. You read the Bible, but now that you're like, okay, you're involved, but they shut you up, they want you to do things their way. In your mind, you're like, well, I think that it would be more effective if I did it this way or this way. So then you start to get this feeling of where the heck am I supposed to go? Because I'm not getting anything out of it, and then I'm also not welcome to volunteer and to try to impact lives. What is the solution to, because there's a lot of Christians out there who are not even Christians, like people who want to go to church, but even when they go to church, they're like, 
every church is the same. And I listened to Jordan Peterson. I remember people wondering, how come Jordan Peterson doesn't go to church? And he said, I don't want to put words in his mouth. So I'm paraphrasing. I think he was having a conversation with his daughter, but something along the lines of when you go to church, it's, it's, it feels kind of fake or it's like a show. And then, you know, I remember when I was a teenager going to church and it just felt like a concert after a while. When I first started going, I'm like, oh, this is fun. But overall, after a time, I'm like, this isn't, after years of doing that, I'm like, this isn't changing me mm. as an individual. Still sad, still depressed. I'm only happy when I'm here on Sundays because it's a concert and then you go home and get a little buzz. And then, any thoughts on that? What's the answer? Then someone's going to say, do not forsake the assembling of believers. Yeah, I was, I mean, even, even, I mean, I'll be honest, even on the way here today, I was just having a quick thought like, man, tomorrow's Sunday. And I honor Sundays, you know, still like it's, but I'm like, where am I going to go? The, the solution is someone has to be the one to stand up and say enough is enough. When are we going to admit this isn't working anymore? And I'm that guy. And so I've noticed, like I was saying earlier, I, I'm that guy. I've, I've, I've always felt for a long time I've, I've been that guy. So I've been studying and preparing. But I've also fallen into, you know, things that have hindered me. And, but, but, but now you're seeing a man who is on a mission and has seen his, his ways, his stumbling ways, and has, you know, my own demise. And also I can see how the enemy has tried to, you know, hinder me. But I, I'm that guy to start. I don't movement's not the word, but I need yeah. a, I need a place where, you know, and I, and I started it, but I, that that's that's how it changes. So many you started to, a home church, yeah, in a way, yeah, yeah, and you know it's not my first time, yeah. but I'm sold out now. I mean, I am sold out. I am I am sold out. <clears throat> what is the biggest flaws that you see? within the church because i mean obviously yeah you're 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 trying to do things and start your own ministry and i mean you have your own ministry I'm not trying to start your own but what are some of the biggest flaws that you see that or what are some of the biggest issues where why you feel the need to have to step up why do you feel this desire to do what it is that you're doing and put this message out there well, some of the flaws, you know, to, to have a mega church or, or a big church, I don't know what they consider a mega church over a certain thousand people. I don't know what it is. But to have a church like that, you have to compromise. You have to dumb a message down. You don't want to offend anybody. So you can't preach about the blood too much. Can't preach about demonic stuff. You know, what, you, know you, you, you can't preach about authority. Can't pre be saying things like dominion and rulership to earth. So you got to dumb it down. And they call it seeker friendly. And seeker right. friendly church has been going on since the 90s. You know, now you can have a hot dog when you walk in or a donut. Praise God, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's what that we, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to hurt Ethel's feelings and right. talk about these deep things. So you got to you got to make you got to make it kosher. So you have to compromise because uh, it's a business. Yeah, and you, the people are more worried about um, members. <sighs> yeah, that is very true, man. And I'd rather get a, a, a facility where I can rent out a, a conference room or a building and. They can't kick me out because I can speak the truth. I dig it. They can't kick me out. Yeah. And I know and that, that's what we need, man, where not to interrupt you, but no. just that is the purpose of fellowship where we can all come. And that's the purpose of edifying one another and building each other up where edification suggests that you guys are not all on the same page, the same level, the same mind. And the reason why we come together and discuss is because you might have something that I don't know. I might have something that you don't know. You could sharpen me, I sharpen you. But for some reason, 
the modern day church now today is this. They use the word edify, but there, there is no edification because you go onto the church's website. Here's what we believe. If you go to that church, if you believe or think anything outside of this list of whatever they have said that they believe, it's like you're, you're excommunicated, but no one voices it. You're just not part of the clique though. And so there's no room to edify one another because we all have to think the same way. And if you think outside of that, then you're false prophet or whatever they want to call you. We need to go back in the, the book of Acts days where we had home churches. And then everybody could talk and put their two cents in. Like you said, you got something to say. I got something to say. You got something to say. Instead of just one man saying it. Yeah. Because everybody got something to bring to the table. And this book, you know, the book of Acts was, that's, that's what we need to get back to. I agree. You know, absolutely. You know, the, I, I'm I'm doing a study now on church. Same. <laughs> yeah, like, so uh, I'm not ready to do it now, but you know, I know the word church is was translated, you know, into the Greek word, which is ecclesia or ecclesia, however they pronounce it. You know, but that you know, we when uh, we hear the word church and we have this picture in our head of going to a building with a donut and you 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 know three songs 17 minute sermon and then the band comes and serenades you at the end with another song and they do a little altar call i mean that's typical church <laughs> but when jesus uses the word church like upon this statement i will build my church telling peter church is a is a is a legislative assembly is a governing body of citizens like i mean did you hear that it's it, it's it's the church is the senate to get the mind of the king onto this territory that's us we are like we're the body and we're supposed to get the 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 the, the um what the, the what the king is thinking the decrees yeah here on the earth realm through us not just have topical preaching taking script most of christianity mm, Half of Christianity is scriptures out of context. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, dude. We just throw out scriptures. The average Christian is an irritant to the world because they, they quote scriptures they know nothing of. <laughs> Anthony words things in a way <laughs> where it's like, that's exactly how I think of it, but he knows how to put it in words. Okay. <laughs> he said half of Christianity is things out of context. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh man, bro! I can't wait till you write a book, bro. Ah, I, I can't know. wait. I should have four of them by now, huh? I know. <laughs> Here we go. But Got yeah, me. it's. I don't know if that's too harsh, and you know. You know what? No. Freaking unleash the beast, man! This is your first podcast. You might as well go all out. This is this is fun. Let me ask you a quick. How do you think about doing your first podcast? How do you feel? <laughs> I'm I'm settling in. You said, <laughs> yeah. I've never done this, and it's. I was a little nervous. <laughs> you were okay. Okay. But, well, hey. I mean, you're 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 doing pretty well, man. I appreciate it. So, yeah. Go ahead. Continue with what you were saying. Ah, just. I'm that guy. I'm that voice, and um. I'm ready to unleash the beast because, you know, my audience isn't necessarily Christians. I, I, I love everybody. I do. I mean, come on, come on. I love everybody. Yeah. I just, my audience, my, I want to cater to people that love Jesus and have been going to church, but feel the way I did. Like something's missing. And I hear a lot of people, man, there's people all over. I, I know for a fact you hear people say, I, I, I did the church thing, but I, I did away with that. I'm done with it. A lot of people are leaving the church, man. They are. And for reasons that, same, same reason why you started studying this message. The Our Father prayer wasn't meant to be quoted. Yeah. It was a template. But we quote it. When I was, I was raised Catholic, we grabbed hands at the end of every, you know, service. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. That's what we did. I'm just saying. I I, I still, I, I pray, but I still say it. This but, is me. But, but, but you know I, what you're saying. Yeah, but I don't tell people that they need to say it, but I, I just do it because I just, I like to have it on my mind, but. I know what you mean. We 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 ritualize things. I went from our from Catholicism, our father. You, wait, you were a Catholic? Yeah. Why oh, I forget Praise about that. Praise God. Thank you. For, it, it, thank you to my my earthly dad. You I went mean, to a Catholic church. I went to Catholic church. Even um had to do the confession thing. Dude opened up a window. <laughs> you know, a little priest. I had to tell him what I did. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, go home, say ten Hail Marys, eat a piece of gum. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, Bro, I love that point today, sir. Um, <laughs> stole 10 bucks of my mom's purse. <laughs> well, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. Say 10 Hail Marys and, you know, eat a stick of Wrigley's and you'll be fine. Thank you, sir. I mean, I, I'm, that you can make fun or you can, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of clowning, but that's what happened. Yeah. I know I'm joking, but that's what happened. Wow, man. I didn't but know. But my father, he taught, he, he introduced, like, it, I believed that, I, be, it didn't take much to believe in Jesus when I started going to Catholic church. Wow. So, yeah. That reminds me, that's why that guy asked me about, oh, wait, no, that was, a, that was a, your Bible study. We went, so, so, there was a guy there who was asking me about the confessional. He's like, should we be doing the confessional? Oh, yeah. And then I was trying to say, I don't. I don't see anything wrong with it. I just think that you have direct access to God yep. yourself. Come on. Um, Come you on. Know, you don't need a man between you and God. There's one mediator between man and one mediator. Come on. Christ. But, you know, it's. Wow, man. Yeah. So I don't know where I was, but yeah. So I'm thankful for my father because he did, you know, he was, you know, but all during the week. Not one thing about Jesus or the kingdom or anything when you're a Catholic, for me. It was just when it was time to go to church on Saturday night, that's the only time you heard about Jesus. And then right back into the routine of daily living. It's just, there was no Bibles out, no talking about, you know, that's what's weird. Even when I became a Christian, which like when I became a Christian in 2005, I, I was talking about Jesus all the time. I mean, we, we at least had that on them. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> but... <laughs> But then, but then this kingdom, and that's what I'm passionate about. And you know, to you, to you guys listening, like I love Jesus. I will never minimize Jesus. Like you know, He's the door. He's the way. He's the truth. He is everything. You can't have a kingdom without a king. You can't. Have, you can't be a king without a kingdom. They go hand in hand. I'm just saying. When I read the King's message, it's all about this kingdom. It's all about this kingdom. You want to know something? I'm going to get two hours with you, bro. I am just so surprised right now that we are only an hour and 10 minutes in. So, anyways. Golly. So, it's probably one of the funnest interviews I've done. Oh, well, my friend Susie, she she is fun, too. <laughs> Doozy talk. I like that. I name. said he's one of the. What's I, I, didn't, I didn't say he. I didn't say my favorite. She she she's controlling the cameras right now. She's switching in between cameras. Go ahead, and switch. See. <laughs> Just kidding. She's getting some training right now. You said what's doozy? Like what? Like doozy? Like I gave her that nickname. I like it. Yeah, it fits. Said doozy. But when I hear do like I don't like when I hear doozy, I'm thinking, oh, that's a doozy. Yeah. Is that what it means? Yeah, that's exactly. Okay. That's a doozy. That's a doozy. That's a, that's the intro to her doozy. um it's a doozy. It's a doozy. <laughs> right. <on. laughs> See, like the truth it. is coming out. Maybe I'll get a name one day. It, it, uh, pff, dude, what are we going to call you? I don't know. Yeah, King Valari. I got to do at least mo one more of these, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yo. All right. Y'all here talking about kingdom. And I think I want to give you some time to explain message of the kingdom message of Christ because people are going to sit there and think like you said well 
Christ is, he is the kingdom or we're, we're supposed to preach. And then they're going to also go to the passage. We preach Christ and him crucified. All right, great. You have that. But then you also have the apostle Paul renting out a house. He spoke about Christ and the things concerning the kingdom. And so I think that's where a big confusion for people where there's like, wait, there's a separation between these two things. And, and then when you say that there's a separation between them, they make you, then they start wondering, are you trying to water down the message of Christ or do we, do we completely separate those two? Well, what's the difference? What, what is this? The message of Christ was a kingdom from heaven coming to earth. Jesus wasn't necessarily the good news. He came bringing it. And anytime you see the word gospel in the Bible, anytime you see the, the word gospel in the Bible, it's always accompanied by not Jesus, I, not salvation, even though that's in there. But most of the times you see the word gospel, it's always accompanied by the gospel of the kingdom. That's red letters. And where the word gospel means good news, the good news of the kingdom. That's Jesus. And so that's that was the good news. But we, so it, it sounds harsh, but you know, Jesus came bringing good news. He wasn't the good news. I know that's harsh, <laughs> but he came bringing good news. That's what he said. Luke 4 43 is, is one example. I must go from town to town preaching the gospel of the kingdom to other towns, for this is the purpose I was sent. That's Jesus. And so, my bad, I didn't want to interrupt. Always. How about, how about you, you break, break, break um, the hat that you're wearing, Matthew 4, 17. Oh. Give us a breakdown of that. So Jesus was 30 years old when he began his public ministry. I guess back in those days when you were a rabbi, he's a, you know, he's a teacher, also the king, also the Lord, also the savior, but he was a teacher and he, you, you, can't be, you can't be a rabbi and start you know, teaching until you're 30 years of age. So that's when he began his public ministry. And Jesus, you know Jesus, he always followed protocol. So 30 years old, he begins his earthly ministry. You can read the heading in your Bible too, Matthew 4, 17. And his first thing he ever said publicly, his earthly statement, you would think most Christians would know the verse because that's a powerful statement. Your opening line, that's what you believe in. That's your cause. And so when I challenge Christians on what was his opening line, man, I hear all kinds of things. And this isn't to knock believers or condemn them. I'm just trying to teach them. You hear things like, oh, his opening line was, oh, shoot, I forgot. Um, to John, love John 3.16? Yeah. <laughs> forgot to love the world. Or love, you know, love your neighbor. You know, you hear, I heard it all. No, it's repent for the kingdom from heaven has arrived. And the word repent isn't a religious word. It doesn't mean go to the altar and say sorry. It means to change your philosophy, change the way you think. Why? Because there's a kingdom that's coming to impact earth now. And the way you think isn't going to work in my kingdom, is what Jesus is saying. It doesn't mean I want to accept you in my heart. It means there's a kingdom coming to impact this earth realm. And you can be a son, you can be a daughter, you can be a citizen of it. But there's only one way through it to get your immigration status back that's through me but see when you don't have a concept of a king or a kingdom in your culture you avoid the whole thing so you just preach a religion called christianity and you you preach what you think you know because we don't have any kingdoms or kings anymore back then they had kingdoms oops sorry back there was kings back then it's such a foreign concept to us so we read the Bible with this democratic mentality, but Jesus makes statements about a king and a kingdom, and he is, he is a king, but we read it out of a filter of a democratic mentality, the Bible. But it's a book about a king, a kingdom, and his royal family. The whole central theme of the Bible is about the kingdom of God and Jesus. And that's what you were saying. In the book of Acts, chapter 28, Paul says he was in his own rented house, or he was on probation, preaching or teaching the kingdom of God and the things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, look at the order. Paul taught the kingdom. Paul said things like, the kingdom is not of meat or drink, 
but of power. You know, the or the kingdom of God is not of mere talk, but of power. Can but, you explain the difference? We come from, if you're from America, you know, we come from a democratic mentality. You know, so democratic way of thinking, democratic culture, demo, everything's democrat. Yeah. Democratic. So explain the difference between a kingdom and a democracy. Well, Jesus would always say things like, you heard if it was, you heard it was said. You heard it was said. Sleep with another man's wife, you committed adultery. But I say to you, if you even look upon a woman in lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. Different kingdom. You, you heard it was said, if you uh, commit murder, or if you, you know, if you, if you, if you, if you kill somebody, you've committed murder. But I say to you in my kingdom, if you even hate someone, you've committed murder in your heart. Different kingdom. And that's why he always, he said, we'd be repent. You better change the way you think. Because in my kingdom, we love our enemies. We pray for those who persecute you. We, we, we don't lie. We don't. What you know. about, um. Uh, a kingdom so uh, uh, okay, okay i got you okay so it, where we live we we vote you know we vote our president in and we don't like the dude i mean now we don't even vote we just rig elections now but that's another topic but <laughs> we vote presidents in and they get four years and if we don't like them cool we vote them out or you know we get another guy in um we even vote laws so if you want to be a girl and the majority votes guess what if you're a guy and it, you know Democracy is cool sometimes, but the problem with democracy is the majority wins. But just because the majority votes on something doesn't mean it's right. And so we change laws. We vote presidents in. Well, here's a shift in thinking. In a kingdom, you don't vote the, pre the king in. You don't vote on any laws. In a democracy, you get a say on the vote. You get to put a little ballot in. But in a kingdom, you don't have no opinion. Jesus never ex explained his laws. He just said them. And your job is you have no opinion in a kingdom. You just do what the king says. Now, thank God this king is different than other kingdoms because in other kingdoms you get your head chopped off if you don't obey. But in God's kingdom, there's grace, there's mercy, there's forgiveness. You know, you're a child. You're not a subject. You know, we can go into that teaching later. But you see what I'm saying? It's just the basics. You don't vote Jesus in. He was king by birthright. And so we read this Bible, and even pastors and priests, they try to get, they get a group of men together, and they try to change laws and say, oh, we can do it this way now. That's not kingdom thinking. They're still in a religion. You can't change Jesus, God's laws. You cannot. And so it's a whole mentality shift. That's why he said, repent. Change your thinking. In my country, the way you think won't work. And it's a beautiful kingdom. I mean... And, and so he goes on to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in the home country. And man, if we, it, I, I can know it and you can know it, but it takes a bunch of people. We got, we got to get, a, we got to get the whole, we got to get the whole community on board. That's when power and manifestation and things can happen here on earth. But if it's just me preaching it to you and we're having, you know, eating carrots at, and dipping it in ranch and just talking about the kingdom here and we're having no earthly effect out there, nothing's going to change. But we, there's, there's, there's time for this thing to still change and earth can look more like heaven. Now we're going to battle a different kingdom. It's called the kingdom of darkness. And it's, you know, there's two, that's, that's what kingdoms, it's, it's, it's a battle. But that kingdom of darkness is laughing at us because they got us, they're looking at us in church with our Bibles raised up. This is our Bible. We will do what it says until we die. Like, we're not doing what it says. We're supposed to be impacting earth. But the devil's like, they're not preaching the kingdom. They're not even impacting earth. They're waiting for heaven. You know? Wow. Hey, my boy out here preaching. Someone's got to say it. Uh, hey, well, you're doing it. I'm doing it. I'm with you. Still learning. Still learning. Haven't, haven't perfected. I don't think I'm close. I, I don't think I'm close. I, I I don't think I'm close. The same thing that you said earlier <laughs> is the same thing that I always think where you're doing all this learning. You see this thing. You see it in there. But the more you learn, the more you realize, I don't know. What in the world? And so you almost kind of start stressing out a little bit because it's 
not to say that it's a bad thing, but it can almost in a way feel like a curse where you're like, you're literally learning as much as you can about God. You're, you're getting wisdom, wisdom for living, biblical knowledge, get wisdom outside of the body, everything, whole package. And the more you learn, the more you feel like you actually don't know. And then when you, the, when you realize you don't actually know what the Bible means and you really don't actually know what Christ meant when he said anything. And you just filled in the blank subconsciously in your mind with, you know, you read the passages in the Bible, you automatically think you know what they mean. Yeah. On a subconscious level, you just filled in a blank. You don't know what he actually meant. So then when you have to start questioning what you believe, and then you realize you are wrong the entire time, Mm. that's the most uncomfortable thing in the world because you're thinking, well, if I got this wrong, then you start wondering if you're even saved. Did you ever go through that? or Because cause I think that's one big hiccup that a lot of Christians have, where if they have to question what they believe, they start being concerned. Well, they will defend their ignorance till they die. Um, I, I didn't go through it, but there was times where you get those thoughts like, am I on, like, wait, have I been duped? But... but, but <laughs> I didn't, I, I wasn't like in a, I never went through a long period where I was like, maybe this kingdom message isn't it. I, I, I kind of, I pretty much believed it right away, but intellectually you got, you got the words down. Yeah. But you didn't have understanding. You got the knowledge. You're excited about it, but you didn't know what the heck you're talking about. I didn't know what I was talking about. And I also realized, and I'm telling you, if for this is for someone, as, as from my own life, I'm going to say a word that we do, we take lightly. obedience obedience in a kingdom i mean that is jesus's love language is obedience and we take obedience we don't know nothing about obedience i'm talking to myself because i used to play with jesus i used to think you know i know he's loving and he's wonderful and he's got so much grace and new mercies every morning and that's all true but i used to be the kind of guy that he want to sip tea with me every time but when you oh, get, you you were thinking that way, yeah. You know, yeah. But he he don't always want to sip tea with you. And in the beginning, he he he'll fluff you up and he'll get you where you know he'll get you going. He'll even do some miracles for you. But ten percent of this walk is is miracles. And all mir- all a miracle is is an intervention by God into a normal process. Let me say that again. <laughs> All a miracle is is just an intervention by God into a normal process. What I've seen mean? miracles. I don't, what does that mean? It, 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 intervention by God by a normal process. Okay. It's just it's normal to him in his kingdom. He just oh, it's just what he does. Miracles are just signs of another government entering your territory. But when he fed fish or five thousand people. It was just God intervening, and then he supplied their needs. I know, you know, he's awesome. <laughs> but obedience, like like I said, I used to just, I didn't like, in, in a religion, you can just say sorry. <sighs> Man. Right? You yeah. sin, you go to the altar, I say sorry. Sin, go to the altar, and... And he's there and he, you know, he shows you mercy, but there's a time and there's times where I get it, like there's an itch and I realize this big things on my head. And so I, when I want to just scratch it, anyways, um, <laughs> anyway, literal. okay, so no, so I'm serious. You get an itch. Well, no, there's like a little itch. No, literal. Yeah. Like a literal. Like, Literally you get start itching when he has something big to say. No, 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 no. Just, uh-uh. I don't know why it's in it. Uh-huh. Anyway. And then I was like, boom, I hear this crash because he's like, so sensitive. <laughs> but anyway, back to obedience. What was I saying? Um, yeah, but. Is your mic too, is this too loud for you? The, the audio? No. Okay. But um, you don't always want to do that. There's a time in your, in your walk where he wants you to sit up straight, buckle up, and, and, and figure this thing out. But there's no obedience in a democracy. And so it's hard to even obey a king, even though you say you love Jesus. That's why he says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but don't obey me? But we don't understand obedience in a democracy. You don't obey a president, you just comply. 
You don't, you comply at your workforce. When you go to work, you comply. But in a kingdom, you obey because out of love for the one who's providing, out of the king. I mean, in God's kingdom anyway, you love that, you love him. I mean, even in a regular kingdom, you obey. Otherwise, you get your neck chopped off. But obedience is huge. And I have learned faith and obedience is the only way. And he will lock things up until you get that figured out. Now, I'm not trying to be legalistic at all, but it's wonderful to obey a king. And I'm sure you know what happens when you don't. You know, you get this... Before being a Christian, I was deceived. And, I, you know, yes, he's, there's mercy, blood. I get it. Past, present, future sins. But when you get... The, the closer you get to God, the less leverage you have. The closer you want to figure him out and figure his kingdom out and walk in authority and dominion, and you know you're an ambassador for Christ, you have, obedience is a must. And when you don't, yeah, that, that blood covers you, but that, that hangover, that spiritual hangover lasts even longer. And it's just, you don't want to mess with the disobedience anymore. And we just, we take it lightly. We take it lightly, obe being obedient, because we just use his blood as a grace to sin. But grace actually keeps people in lawlessness. That, <clears throat> wow. Well, one thing is, is that, on that word obedience, you know, in a kingdom, it's actually a privilege to do something that the king Come on. asks. Like there, you're you're being called to do something. It's like a privilege. And and I heard of a real life example of this where there was a man that a business guy that I listened to who was talking about how he went to a kingdom. A place where there was a government that ran as a kingdom and i guess there was a queen there some along those lines watching this story and then while he was there they're going to do some sort of an, an event or something or maybe like a business event or something but supposedly the queen needed that specific building and the people were like oh yeah well the queen's taking the the building or the king or who, whoever it was and then he, him being from America was thinking, wait, so you guys are just going to let the king or the queen just take the, take the building. And then they're like, yes, of course. And so totally different culture living in America. Mm. I own everything. And this is my car. This is my house. This is my, 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 In a kingdom, you don't own anything. Everything belongs to the king, even the citizens. And, Come but, but, but we, if, if, if we're from America, we think of that as a terrible thing where I think we think of it as a terrible thing because whoever's running the show, all we've ever seen is corruption. But there's a reason why it calls him a righteous king. Come on. He has our best interests in mind. So preferably, we would rather have somebody who has our best interests in mind and loves his people and loves his country and loves his kingdom and loves those who run uh his servants that's what we would prefer but anyways so this man went on to say he was shocked that they would allow the king or the queen to take the building and then he says to this other man you're just gonna let that happen and I said of course whatever whatever is the queen's or the king's it's 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 already theirs do you know whose face is on our money and then he's like who He's like the king or the queen or whoever it was. And he was like, he was like, yeah, even our money belongs to the king. And it was like a privilege to them. Like they're going to use our building. Mm. Take it. But yeah. Obedience, like how you said, it's a, it's their love language. It's just like the prodigal son. We always talk about the prodigal son, but we never talk about the dude that stayed in the house. You know what I mean? <laughs> we talk about the prodigal son, but we don't talk about the dude. The stayed. other son that yeah, stayed in the house. That stayed in the house, yeah. When Jesus said, like, you know, what are you tripping on? Everything I, I've, I, I have, everything that is mine is yours. But the son that left home, I like how Miles puts it. You know, they lived in the, they lived in the ocean, but the, 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 the son that left home wanted a bucket of water. 
and he wanted to leave home. But he lived in the whole ocean. And that's what we do with Christ. Like, we have this whole kingdom to our disposal. He said, little flock, do not be afraid. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I don't think we know what that means. We got a whole country. And it says, your, it's, it's my pleasure to give it to you. What? I mean, he says we're co-heirs. But don't that'll get you kicked out of that'll get you, that'll get you kicked out in church. We are partakers of the divine nature, Peter said. That'll get you kicked out. You can't be talking about partakers of the divine nature. We Man, like so just stay in your place. Get your little Noah's Ark sermon. No, Bar, don't forget Barney didn't make the boat. <laughs> and we're gonna have potluck with Jesus on Friday night and pizza with the pastor. <laughs> And then we keep on doing gimmicks, gimmicks. And That's you, true. It's like a circus. And if you have to have a circus to get them in, guess what? You got to keep a circus to keep them there. It, you can tell me if I'm wrong. I know some of you experienced this. So I ain't the only one, but someone got to stand up. You know, I'm done with the three ring circus on Sunday. Smoke lights, LED machines. What is it? <laughs> Smoke <laughs> machines, LED lights. <laughs> Concert. And some of the people behind the guitar shouldn't even be behind there, but that's a different term. <laughs> they let anybody sing. I got to pray before I go into church. I do. But I don't want... There are, you know, there are brothers, there are sisters, but, I, but they, 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 have been, they have been hypnotized in their souls. So when something spiritual happens, they're not ready. I'm talking to me too. We have been hypnotized in our soul, fed cold snacks. So when something spiritual happens, which this whole thing is spiritual, we're not ready for it. What's I prove my point when the pandemic hit? Where were all the faith healers? We put our mask on, they shut the country down, and the church went in hiding. What does the proverb say, King, Sol uh, King Solomon? When the righteous rule, or when. When 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 the wicked rule the right uh oh oh now, the me. people rejoice when the righteous are in rule. Thank you, thank you, Lord. The people thank rejoice you. when the righteous are in authority. Yep. Um, yeah. But but when the wicked rule, the people mourn. We're mourning. What good news? He called good news. That's why it's such good news. A righteous government coming to earth. But we are the ones that play a part of it. We are the ones. But people want to die and go to heaven. But Jesus said, I pray that you don't take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. Occupy till I come. I got news for you. <laughs> you might have to edit this, but I know you won't. But hopefully you don't. You don't. Oh, it's, you said it's my show, but it's your, it's your show. show. It's your oh. show. <laughs> Help me, Lord, Holy Spirit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you don't want to go to heaven. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I can see the religious stones. <laughs> you don't want to go to heaven. Ain't nothing to do there. He gave the, the Bible says earth and heaven are of the Lord's, but the earth he gave to the sons of men. He you get one shot to rule earth. You see, the whole plan of God was for, for heaven to come to earth, and the way he would do that was put his spirit inside those who believe, and we'd be his representatives, or better yet, his sons and daughters. Without him actually coming to the planet, he just stays on the throne. And he gave us dominion. You want to die and go to heaven? When you get the kingdom message, that's when I finally didn't want to die. I do not want to die. I want to stay here and rule. Now, don't get me wrong. This place sucks. It's, it's, it sucks. And that's why people's mentality is, take me now, Lord. Even the songs we sing, you know, you've heard me, you know, even the songs we sing in church, come on. Oh, man. I'll fly away. I'll fly away to... Fly away where? He's coming back here. And we're going to rule here. The earth is going to roll up like a scroll. And we're going to rule here. Even our songs are bad. We got to check our theology in the songs we sing. You're, bro. But they're, they're singing them. Explain it. Just, I mean, I, there, there's some worship that I be, that, 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 I mean, you know, I got a few voices in my life. And I've heard a lot. I mean, you got to be careful who you listen to, and who who's who's usher who, who's worshiping too. Um, but I've listened. To, I've been in the presence of worship that, you know, demons fall out of trees. 
like powerful. But what, what, what do you mean by that? I'm just saying some powerful worship that anointed men and women oh. up there know how to worship, oh, know okay. how to usher in the presence of the Holy Ghost. But this stuff with the banjo and, <laughs> you know, Larry's been playing guitar. <laughs> when are we going to admit it's not working? It's not wor I know that's harsh. You can't just let anybody go up there on a Sunday morning now. You know, I know we love people. I, a lot of churches, you know, you got you to gotta, you gotta audition and stuff. But there's some churches, they let anybody. That's true. That is very true. Um, Dude just hit the weed going up there on Sunday. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, but anyways. I went to a church that. Seriously. That, that's, that's what was going on. While he's sleeping with the. Yep. Sister Sally. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying. I know we mean well sometimes, but sometimes we're just, we made it a business and we, we got it. When are we going to admit it's not working? And I know you feel the same way. Maybe not as. It's, I mean, the way I feel is like, look, because I know people are going to say, you're in error. Right. And my thinking is, is there not anything that you're in error about? Not you, talking about the people who accuse other people. Is there anything that you could think of? Well, obviously you can't think of it because you, if you were in error, you wouldn't know. But what I do think is, is, but I do know that this thing right here is not working. So if I'm in error, I'd rather be in error looking for truth, looking for something that actually works than to be sitting here and just be comfortable in this error. And I'm hungry. I'm hungry for more. And that's what I that's what I know about you, where you're like, look, even if I'm not right, I know that this thing over here ain't working. I mean, is that accurate? Yeah, I mean, if I I know that I will be judged for every idle word I spoke about Jesus, about the kingdom, yeah, about the church. I take it serious. I know I'd be clowning and joking. Yeah, right. But right. To he who has been given much is required much, and I will be responsible for everything I've said. Um, I can back up what I say with scripture, um, quoting Jesus, and uh, I don't. I don't want to debate with anybody. My heart is for these souls that have been lied to or deceived and that are just hungry like we are and yeah. haven't been given haven't been given the opportunity to even hear the message of the kingdom i know they've heard the message of jesus but what we do in church is we preach a lot about jesus but we don't preach what jesus preached we talk a lot about jesus but not what he talked about and we we talk about his miracles we make sermons out of them but we got to get back to what jesus preached it was just a three-year sermon it's only three and a half years and they killed him. I mean, the guy lived for 33 years only. Those 30 years prepared him for just three years of ministry. And it was kingdom, 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 kingdom. It's all kingdom. It's the context of the Bible. It's not just one little separate message and everything else is about love and peace, prosperity. Everything you're looking for is in the kingdom. Like the shoe store analogy. But you just, you're, even like when you go to a hotel, I mean, or let's do the mechanic analogy. Another analogy to help you. My car got broke down. And I need that thing to, to be functional again so I can get back on the streets. So I take it to a mechanic and he fixes it. You know what? I'm just going to leave that car in the garage with the mechanic and just hug the mechanic for the rest of my life. And thank you, mechanic. I love you, mechanic. <laughs> do I want to do that or do I want to get that car back on the road? And so if you don't know the purpose of the message of Jesus or the purpose of life, you end up, don't get me wrong, but you worship, you end up worshiping your whole life and never get to experience kingdom living. And Jesus, you know, he's worth worshiping, but you worship just, that's what you do in a kingdom. You worship the king, but figure out his message so you can experience life and get that peace and joy and 
you can get rid of anxiety and depression. And religion, that's what that's religion is hard work, and its work is its reward. <laughs> Man. Religion is hard I, work. I never and had its peace. work. And its work is its reward. Wow. So if you want to do potlucks for Jesus every Friday night and get the gang together and then wash those dishes every Friday night, that's uh, there's your work. Now you got, you know, <laughs> but what it's cool to have potlucks for Jesus. You know, the problem is we talked about this, but it's the seeker friendly church and the, the the problem is the pulpit the pulpit is silent it's what's coming out of it it's what is coming out of it and it's nothing but cold snacks <laughs> is that harsh <laughs> go to a church near you on sunday and you'll see just Listen, and tell me if you hear the word kingdom once. Tell me if you hear the message of the kingdom. And I can promise you, you won't. And if they do, it's out of context. And if you do, it's out of context. You might hear the, the, the phrase kingdom, the kingdom of God, we're doing work for the kingdom, you know, but the message of the kingdom. And it's all, it's, it, you know. So uh, I, Yeah, other than that, you're going to just, you're going to go and you get a little David and Goliath sermon, and you need to be courageous in life. Yeah. That's Peter good. walked on That's water. Good. That's a good message. He took his eyes off the storm. Yeah. Or Jesus. <laughs> and he sank. Oh, ye of little faith. And so we use that sermon, and then we it, we topicalize it. We bring a... um. We we use that sermon, and we kind of have a... We, we build a message around that. Out of context... Out of context, out of context, bro. Honestly, I'll, I'll I'll be real with you, bro. I'll be real with you. How am I gonna word this? We, got yeah, we haven't here. even talked about. Go ahead. We haven't talked about what yet. We haven't even talked about the demonic realm. Is that another sermon? Because we, we got people getting ate up for lunch <laughs> by that unemployed cherub and his demons. <laughs> <laughs> oh my you know gosh, I mean? bro. I remember when I was a teenager, I was that guy who I would say the thing that everybody was thinking, but they didn't want to say it because they didn't want to be the one to say it because then they might be the person who gets hated for saying it. And so I, I was always that guy. I just speak my mind. I say whatever it is I'm thinking. And then everybody else around me gets kind of nervous like for me. They're like, what the? Bro, you need to have your own podcast or something or, or just come on my more. You, you need to write a book or something. You got so much that I think that the way you're talking right now, I feel like it's so surface level. If someone was listening to what you were saying, they're going to be thinking, if this is the first time, they'd be like, oh, what the, oh, snap. Okay, the Bible says that. Oh, oh. oh I don't know about that. You know, they're kind of back and forth. You know, oh, kingdom, this sounds exciting. There's going to be a lot of mixed emotions with the yeah. stuff that you're saying. And I'm saying what you're saying is it's surface level. Like, if someone's surprised about what you're saying, this is like an introduction. <laughs> this is just an introduction because I know you got a lot more. I got no doubt if you keep going on the trajectory you're on, you're going to make noise. Because you know the devil's listening to this podcast. Oh, I believe that. Talking about the spiritual realm. He's like, he's like, well, we haven't even gotten to the spiritual realm yet. I'm like, oh, shit. He's listening to it. He's like, man, I can't get near that guy. So he might come after you or you. Good thing we ain't live. We ain't got all of hell listening. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you think about what I just said right now? I, I appreciate the opportunity because I, I, I agree with you. That's what I'm trying to say. Because you I've been pregnant say the, for years. You say the <laughs> things. You say what I am thinking out loud. That's what I'm trying to say. You said I could go all in oh yeah no you <laughs> go all in you, do you get what i'm saying oh yeah like like i'm like you know how to say what i'm thinking very fast if i say it it comes out a little bit slower or i'm just like i see what you're saying i'm now. thought i'm it thoughtful clicked. about it and then i'm like okay well someone asked me what do you think about the kingdom i'll be like well you know you got this passage this passage i'll kind of break it down a little bit you're like for governing influence you're like everywhere and then bam and then I'm like, I got everything that you're saying. Yeah. But I know someone listening, they're going to be thinking, uh, 
what he just say? <laughs> so that's where I'm coming from. And, and I'm going to say it again, just for the sake of the audience. And with everything I've said, I, I feel like I'm, I, I, I'm, I feel like I'm inadequate to teach or preach about it. No, bro. I, I, and I'm not, I'm not saying it to get anything back from you. I'm saying the, because the, Jesus is so amazing and this kingdom is so amazing, but I just feel like I have so much to learn. Okay, well. You know, you don't. Yeah. But, so, yeah, it's just, that's how, that's how vast and. <laughs> that's what comes with it, man. The more you learn, the more you feel like you don't know. And then I'm telling you from a person, look from the outside looking in, I'm telling you, if, how do I put this? How do I summarize everything I'm trying to say? If you are on like a Joe Rogan podcast, I'm saying that you're going to, bro, <laughs> it's going to go nuts. I'd rather but. be on the Creed podcast, baby boy. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I always tell people like, even when I do like the study, the home studies, like, I mean, I'm a lot better than when I was like, as far as like, but we were talking about the other day, like Jesus chose you know, he chose word of mouth to get his message out. And I, I just wish he didn't. I wish he didn't do that. <laughs> I wish he could just split open the sky and say, look, y'all, figure it out. I'm here. And then we all could look at him and go, oh, my God, he's real. He's real. <laughs> but he chooses us. And this is something I, I always want to run from because I don't like hearing myself. It's just, it's, it's, it is a, oh, what is it? What's it called? It's a flaw or whatever, or like uh, insecurity. Yeah. Okay. So no. I run from these things. I really do. No, that's why I'm telling you on the podcast. So yeah, no, if, if you replay this and you watch this, you'll be. Think I'm telling you right now, you are good at what you do. Well, I, 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 I mean, I appreciate it, but I, I do it out of assignment. You know what I mean? Like okay. I feel like I got something to say. Yeah, yeah. So I do it out of assignment, but, but I okay. Does that make sense? No, I got you. I got you. Like you do it out of sight. I have to do it. Yeah, I have to hold Bible studies on Wednesday nights to get what I what He has given me. But I don't necessarily feel. Yeah, and you're you're not doing it for compliments either. No, and and it's, but that's what I'm saying. The reason why I'm telling you that you're good at doing what you're doing is because I think that your voice is needed, and so that's why I'm trying to. I'm complimenting you and telling you your voice is needed. You're good at communicating. You're good at articulating this. You're really good at talking about this. And like, yeah, you do go really fast. And good thing I've I am studied on this stuff to where I can catch what you're saying and I know the meaning of it. Right. And and, and I've told you this before. Like, like I think sometimes you you go real fast to where I don't think someone fully understood it. But obviously, like we talk about, unless you're really seeking, you're not you're not going to even get it anyway. But what I'm saying is you're you're good at doing this. And I think that whatever path that you were saying that you're on and how you were saying earlier, hey, I'm still seeking and I'm still learning and I'm still, you know, you're still trying to answer the questions. And but you've you said that you've gotten closer and different things. I'm just saying from what I seen with you from when I first met you till now, I've I'm seeing an entirely different man and to where I. <laughs> I got I got Anthony in 4K on video at a church trying to preach kingdom at a point in life. I won't show the video. <laughs> he always says, "Don't." He always says, that, "You know, you don't want to see it." <laughs> I still got that video every time. But um, it was a long time ago when you were we were going to a church and then oh. you you were you were preaching the kingdom, but you you had some understanding, like. But I think you mainly just had some zeal. But now I was premature. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> but I think now though, you're um I could see the work that God has done in you. I could see it. I could see it. and, and even cool. even within the past couple of years, from you know, the times when you're going through some rough patches and you, you know, you know, we'll, we'll chit chat and you know, discuss what hey, hey, we'll talk about this, pray about this stuff and I'm like you keep telling me over the phone, you're like, dude, I am sold out. I am sold out. I am in this now. God is, uh, you know, and, and that's why I called you the other day and I said, hey, bro, like it literally crossed my mind. I said, hey, bro, I know why you're going to succeed. 
I was like, you don't quit. Like, even if you fall, you're like back on track because you're like, I know that this is the only way. And so I'm not when you start popping off or what, whatever it is that God has you doing. I got no doubt. I'm I, I'm everybody else might be shocked. I'll be like, I already saw it. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> I already saw it. Give me the money. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's a that's my compliment to you. What do you want? What do you think about every day? What uh, do you think about when you wake up? The main thing I think about is I want people to discover this kingdom. I do. I do. I want people to discover this kingdom. I wake up in the morning. I, I'm not I'm not trying to sound religious. I think about Jesus. He's the first person I talk to. I mean, I, I'm not saying it's a long, drawn-out prayer, but I'm just saying, what's up, God? How you doing? You know? You know? And then it's, it's kingdom. I just want people, I, I want people desperately to discover this message. It's, that is, that is, I mean, I'm going to die. I'm going to die preaching it. Yeah. And I want to understand it more for myself so I can articulate and deliver it the best I can. Because I, I, like I said, I, I'm still trying to figure this thing out, but I know, I know I'm onto something. I know I am. Yeah. I, I know we are. I know we are. Bro. But, I know it too, man, because I'm I'm like how you were saying earlier, the the depression is gone. It's gone. Where did where did it go? I have peace now. You know. And so if you're depressed and you're a Christian, you haven't found the kingdom yet. I mean Jesus said it's like finding a treasure. Like Yeah. Not that you're not saved. Not yeah. Nothing to do with being saved. I would well go ahead, you could ask more questions. No, go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, I was just, I would, in a, in a, in a, in a, to sum it up, I would, this is what I did in, in, a, in a, sh a short version. You need to ask yourself, what is the purpose of mankind? Why did God create mankind? Go to the book of Genesis till you figure it out. Read Genesis 126 and understand the mandate. Don't just read it once. Read it for about five years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Stay on Genesis 126. Understand what that what that what what he is saying. Realize the fall. What happened? What actually Adam lost? If you want to know what Adam lost, study what Jesus brought. And so then go fast forward and go to the New Testament and read the life of Jesus. And you will see he came to bring this kingdom. It's all in there. And but if you don't know the, 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 the mandate of mankind and what, what the whole purpose of God creating humans is, you're going to misunderstand the Bible. And for 10 years, I went to church when I first became a believer. They weren't discussing the mandate and why we were here. It was just get your gold card or your, your golden ticket. That's all it was. And, you know, learned a lot of great things. But the Bible says when anyone becomes a disciple of the kingdom, He's, he's like a store owner that goes into a store and grabs old treasures as well as new. And he's saying, y'all got some information from the Old Testament. Y'all got some goodies back there. But now let's go into this new, this, this, not, this, this message of the kingdom, this new treasure. You know, even Luke 16, 16 says, Ever since John, the law and the prophets were proclaimed. But since then, the kingdom is being preached, and everyone is forcing their way in. In other words, when you discover what this kingdom is and begin to f figure it out, you want to get in it. You want to seek it. You know, the word seek means desire to know, to pursue diligently. You know, are you doing that with the kingdom? Are you desiring to know it? Are you pursuing it? No, what you're doing, you're desiring to know Jesus more. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're desiring to know Jesus more, then you should be able to figure out what he was on about this kingdom. Ever since John, the law and the prophets, we were given the law through Moses. We were given the prophets. They were telling us about the coming king in this kingdom. Daniel talked about this kingdom. But since then, God, the kingdom is being preached. It should be being preached, which means to declare. That's why I'm on here. I'm, we're declaring the kingdom. Get ready for part two because this is part one.
Thank you for watching the Creed podcast. Subscribe, hit the like button. Thank you for watching.